Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Page of History 2 Gameplay. Today, I will be showcasing my new mod that I've been working on. This is a major project, so like Age of Imperialism and TSGW, so the Second Great War mod. And this is focused on the Napoleonic period and the French Revolutionary Wars. It will be one with very little scenarios, but that will be filled with events and features. Of course, you can see already that there is a completely new UI, so a complete UI revamp. And let's get right into it. As you can see, the entire map is completely done from zero. So we have completely new provinces, completely new province names, completely new aesthetics. And as you can see, even the countries are renamed in some cases. The map is the one of 1795, which is not a scenario in the main game, but it's close. But of course, it's uh, redone to portray historical accuracy. We have new leaders for all the nations and the correct ones, of course. We have new government types like the Revolutionary Republic, which is France, or the Constitutional Monarchy, which is Great Britain, or the Enlightened Despotism, which is the Austrian Empire. And of course, other government types like the Oligarchic Republics, the Theocracies, and the Absolute Monarchies. That said, this is a scenario that is focused on the Napoleonic era. And of course, this means a lot of war. How to portray this war is difficult in Age of History 2, so we'll have a lot of events that spawn vassals, armies, and buffs and nerfs for the different countries. Because of course, if it, this wasn't the case, it would just get boring. The events I've put in the scenario for now are not that many, so of course we'll have to wait a while for the mod to get better because it's still in a beta, even in an alpha, I would say. But of course, we already have the main features, so the map, the provinces, the countries, and some event lists. We have completely renamed provinces, by the way. This uh, mod does not feature the normal way of naming provinces, which is usually by their cities or their biggest city. And instead, in this case, it has province names, according to the regional divisions that the Napoleonic era countries had in those times. So some things like Bohemia, like this is the region of Bohemia, then we have the region of Eastern Pomerania, we have the region of Brandenburg, we have the region of Frisia, and etc. etc. But you can notice that some places have names of cities. Names of cities are according to the terrain types. This mod has a new type of terrain, which of course means new features. As you can see, in different colors from the normal types of terrains are special cities, which are terrain types that are specific for the biggest or most strategically important cities that we had in this era. We have things like Istanbul, Rome, Paris, Munich, Konigsberg, and Stockholm. So all these places are not regions but cities and they have their own features. Like you can see Rome has a lot of military upkeep bonuses, Paris has a lot of bonuses everywhere because it was very big, London has good economy growth and building costs, Copenhagen is generally good but not that much, a lot of military upkeep bonuses, same thing for Stockholm and of course Moscow and St. Petersburg and etc etc etc. A lot of events that I have to feature with this mod have something to do with the special cities, so control over these special cities will have events uh, linked to them. Today we will not be playing as France, which is governed by the National Convention in 1795, but we will instead show a minor country that participated in the Napoleonic and French Revolutionary Wars, which is the Kingdom of Spain. So of course let's get the Discovery at Classic and 0% aggressiveness, and let's start. So here's the loading, and of course here we start. The UI is completely remade, as you can see everything is different and the cities the major ones have like a little city um, icon to distinguish them of course they are usually capitals but they can also not be capitals and madrid has their own icon so we can see that in madrid we have special effects that are a bigger defense bonus a bigger movement cost and population growth and economy growth and of course we will have to see the military points in this mod, we have a lot of military and technology points, I mean, for a lot of different countries. We have some nerves to some countries because, of course, they would be too strong, like Britain and 
France, but they can gain some technology points through events. Anyways, let's get our technology points right on the things we need. So military keep, administration and income production. You can see other uh, like major cities have their own aesthetics as I can show here. But anyways, let's start. So we can have, we already have a lot of troops here. As you can see, when I move a troop, a little figure that, that shows the troops shows up. This is just an aesthetic thing, but I, can, I think it looks pretty good. Anyways, we have friendly civilizations like Sicily, the Neapolitans, and the Portuguese. Let's start first turn. The start of it all. You're playing as one of the monarchies of the world in 1795. It's been almost three years since the start of the revolution that took place in France. Their king was beheaded, their monarchy abolished, and their people declared a republic. Now, your country has observed the situation develop from a distance. What will you do? Will you join the revolution or do you join the reaction? Well, in this case, I think to showcase better the mod, I'll join the reaction. So we will crush that revolutionary scum. This way, I can be a part of the revolutionary wars instead of being an ally of France, which is neutral usually, because usually allies of France don't really join the war. The initial reaction. As the ideals of the revolution start spreading in all sorts of ways across the continent, we must win the ideological debate to preserve our millennia-old traditions against these ferocious revolutionaries. To do so, we must choose. Should we uphold our monarchist roots by coming to an agreement with our population, or should we double down to the divine infallibility of the royals? Now, what this means is it gives us two choices. Whether we try, we try uh, moderating ourselves and becoming a constitutional monarchy, usually, or we can try doubling down and trying to get a more absolute monarchy or even an enlightened despotism. I don't specifically remember which one lets us join the invasion as an ally, so I think we will just have to go with if we work with the people we'll have a better chance. Let's see what our next event is. By the way, in a while the first war will start between the French and the Dutch. Yes, there we go. This is the first war of the revolutionary wars after the French invasion of the Rhine region. And of course, it will bring to the first declaration of a revolutionary republic which is not France. We will see that in a while. For now, let's just wait for an event to happen and wait and see wherever a new war will happen. So, this is the major war we can see. The French have invaded the HRE and of course, the Great British have joined the war on the side of the German states. The French usually do a strategy where they declare the independence of the German states they annex by the declaration of a Rhine Republic, or a Rhine Revolutionary State anyways, Rhine Confederation that is. Let's see, let's see our next event, compromising. The populace, while realizing the poor state they had been left in for centuries, has yet to accept the new reality that the revolution has been suggesting. Many are disgusted by the revolution's actions toward the church, while some just wish their entire revolutionary spirit was more peaceful. This gives us, the ruling dynasty, the time and occasion needed to strike a compromise with our people. Why give them full freedom when we can keep them most of the power? Hmm, okay, so we can either try going through a constitutional monarchy, or we can get an elective monarchy. Now, I don't remember quite which, which benefits are to an elective monarchy, but I know that constitutional monarchies will bring us closer to the British, so I think that is the way we will try going. You can see the invasion of uh, German states continues, and the French have not declared the Petavian Republic as they usually do, meaning that the Dutch have managed to resist at least partially in Frisia, but they have declared the independence of the Rhine Confederation, so this is the second revolutionary republic in Germany. They have also vassalized the Saxons, but they have fully annexed the southern parts of Germany, which will probably bring the Austrians in conflict with them very fastly. Limiting the monarch's powers. With the revolution in full swing in France, our monarchs have realized that it is time to give up some powers in order to keep the throne and the stability of their nation. This has given many ideas to the people, and one of them, seemingly the most popular, is the creation of a constitutional a constitution under the United Kingdom's model. Time for us to become a constitutional monarchy. 
Now the Kingdom of Spain is a constitutional monarchy, which means we have to adjust these ones just to get them right, and that we have a bit of bonuses, and that with a bit of luck we might join the coalition, but that is yet to be seen. And meanwhile, let's just see how things developed in the European sphere. So France is continuing the invasion of these minor states and has vassalized all states in Germany which are not part of the Rhine Confederation and of course has annexed the southern part of Germany. Now, in a while, I'm not sure exactly what month, I think June, the invasion of Italy will start. As we can see, the British are still at war with the French, but now they have peaced out, meaning that now France is free to do what it wants in Italy. If Austria declares war against France, Britain will not be able to join in, and we might see a fast defeat of the Austrians. Okay, so the war started. The Austrians decided to leave Italy and let Milan fight against the French alone, which means that the Austrians will not risk a war with the French when they know they can't win. So let's see how the things develop in southern Europe. We have the occupation of many states. And it appears that the French have not decided to proclaimate the Cisalpine Republic, which means that they will just own the entire area. This means that the French are going to be very strong, because they will not create any sister republics, which usually means they get a bit nerfed. So in this case, they are just going to occupy Milan, which I guess is just a compromise. So, in this scenario, we are seeing a very strong France, which has decided to just annex a lot of territories. This, in turn, means that, of course, they can't resist for long, and eventually a coalition will form to fight them. Since I am not seeing any coalition events to firing, and I am not seeing any major allies that join the coalition, except for Brunswick, which is already a French ally, and the Swedish, which are an absolute monarchy, Oh, by the way, the Dem Danish have decided to establish an elective monarchy, which is now an electoral realm of Denmark. And of course, the British have decided to annex the Sardinians to protect them. Or at least that's what they would probably claim. The, the next invasion is the one of Egypt. I think it's time to start building up our army, because of course, when the French declare war against the Egyptians, usually what that means is that the entire world will go against the French. So we have to make ourselves prepared. I think these, like, 70,000 troops should be enough to fight the French in the southern front. So, in a matter of seconds, the first invasion of Egypt will start. There we go. So France has declared war against Egypt, and of course that means war against Britain. Which in turn means war against the coalition. So now the French have only the Rhine and some other allies in Germany as their ally and they have the entire coalition which is the Austrian Empire, the Swedish, the British, the Egyptians and maybe maybe the Ottoman Empire but they usually don't join because they know they might lose. So since they are very nerfed right now, I think we must join to salvage the anti-revolutionary spirits. So we will join the war against this, the French and see how that goes join and join in the south. Okay, for now we have managed to capture two territories and the Rhineish the Confederation has declared war against us. Of course the French are going at us back, but fortunately we conserved most of our cash and our money so we might be able to repel their invasion. But we have of course very very amount, very big amounts of troops, but that is just how it is. As you can see we have another thing, another aesthetic thing, where we, in, if we move into France, we have a little French flag that symbolizes the defending army. Anyways, let's keep the invasion going. The French keep the repel of the invasion, but I think we can split this army in two and probably manage to capture both Bordeaux and Aquitaine, and I think I'll just keep this army as it is. The Austrians, meanwhile, are almost, going, are almost finished winning against the Rhine Confederation. But it appears that the Swedish have not joined a military invasion yet and that the French are still going strong in the rest of Europe. And also they have occupied roughly half of Egypt, which means for now the British will have to wait. Okay, we have occupied quite a few territories, which is very good for us, but this does not mean certain victory. 
I think we have to keep the invasion going because I think the French eventually, yeah, that was what I was referring to. They have a lot of troops and they're just not scared of using them all. Of course, we can keep conscripting and recruiting men here in Aragon and Catalonia, but if we lose, we won't be able to come back. Okay, that is a very bad thing, but I think we can still do it. Okay, let's get the invasion to Vendi uh, region and the Chartres region, and maybe let's get to Nimes. We still have very, very big amounts of troops, but if we spread out our troops, we might be able to defeat them. So, let's get these guys here and keep the invasion going in Brittany. Meanwhile, let's check on the Austrians. The Austrians are not doing that good, honestly. I expected better from them. We might want to get the switch Swiss in here, so we'll have to pay them a, a small amount of money and let them join the invasion against the French. Let's check the rest of Europe, still not doing much. And of course, the French have won against the Egyptians. So this means that Britain is extremely out of the war. And of course, it's extremely nerfed because their main tradeways have been blocked. So the French are recovering terrain. Oh my god, they have a lot of troops. Can we even do this? I'm starting to think we're, we might lose, like, genuinely. Let's keep the recruitment up, and even in Catalonia. So they still have very big amount of troops, but I still think we might have a chance. If we just keep our resources right, and if we keep the allies we have on their fronts. Our main objective is just to limit the amount of troops that the French have, so the Austrians can do the rest of the work for us. So, let's keep this going like this. Hopefully they have no troops in Italy, so we can stop them very easily here. But we cannot be sure if that is the case. Okay, that is very bad. The French have almost 20,000 troops here. While in here we have not even, not even like 30,000. We'll have to move our troops and hopefully the Austrians have better armaments than us. But meanwhile the Prussians aren't doing anything, which is kind of sad. I expected them to be more participate in the war, but the Egyptians have rebelled against the French in Egypt, so hopefully that will be a big distraction. Meanwhile, let's get some uh, um, loans, so we can keep the invasion going without problems. And let's recruit people in Navarra and Catalonia, and hopefully that will be enough. Okay, they keep repelling our invasions every time we try. That is obviously a very bad thing, but I still think we have a chance. Or maybe not. Man, these guys are really, really, really tenacious. They really don't want to surrender. But these Swiss, I've noticed, have been managing to defeat these guys, so maybe they might take the entirety of Italy, which would be very good for us. Let's check it out. Man, the French are really just, just destroying us. If we don't manage to continue the fronts, we might be able to lose actually, because, wait, let me check, oh my god, this is very very bad, we don't have enough troops to continue the invasion, and, okay, so the Austrians are doing good here, they managed to repel the, like, Croatian thing, let's get the, the Dutch to reclaim the lands, maybe that will help the Austrians a little, hopefully, the French have to go, like under 15 provinces to capitulate but they keep invading with these massive amounts of troops so i'm not sure hmm. okay so the swiss haven't yet taken aosta where i think the majority of the french army in italy is and we have gotten the dutch to join us the british like retreating is a very bad thing and the swedish can't really help that much Good thing is the French have not called the the Dutch in, thanks to the fact that they've switched to electoral monarchy. Let's hope that was enough to defeat the French. Okay, let's keep going with the troops and move the troops around. Oh my god, okay, that is very bad. The Swedish, this, like, okay, the front is trying, oh my god, this is awful. Okay, so these Dutch have already been defeated. And the Austrian front is starting to collapse, as is the Swiss one. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that is good. This is very good. We are starting to see some minor 
uh, success. And hopefully, with the capture of Bendy, we'll be able to defeat them. Okay, so the Swiss are starting to recover. These guys still have 40, 40 provinces, though. They are far from capitulating. Also, notice that I have a correctly uh, proportioned Avignon province in case somehow the Pope manages to rise up or something. I don't know. Okay, that is bad. That is very bad. Okay, I have to bring some troops there. Maybe the Swiss managed to get um, Paris, which will, like, destroy the French bonus. Would be very... Oh my god, they still have that many troops. We're done for. We have no chance of winning this. It's over. I don't think we can win. We have so many provinces yet, and they still have that many men. And we have no money to recruit our troops anymore. We even got all our loans. I might, might need to... Um, yeah, this is a problem, of course. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think we can win. I think we'll actually lose. So I think this this time the French have been able to, you know, defeat us. We have no armies, and even if we recruit, we won't have more like than 6,000. Yeah, not even 6,000, 5,000. We can bring this 5,000 up, but it's not, not gonna work that much. It's just gonna, like, stop them for a while. We can try. No, There's no shame in trying, of course. But I don't think we have the manpower to continue a serious invasion. Yeah, we have almost over, like, like 20,000 troops, I suppose. The Austrians have a very bad... Okay, we got the loans back, though. That is great. That means... We might be able to get the loans back, which is great for us. Okay, there's still a chance, guys. There's still a very, very, very small chance that we can actually uh, change things. I think we did it, guys. I think... I think we actually did it. It would be wonderful if we did. Okay, we won. Okay, this is insane. We actually won. This is fantastic. So, we defeated the revolution in 1799. The Dutch Republic is re-established and it's gotten like entirety of Belgium. The Prussians get the Rhine. The French have been turned into an absolute monarchy and are now peaceful towards us. The Sardinians uh, are back with these territories. The Swiss have fucking gotten the entirety of Italy, which is insane, basically. And for some reason, Munster is still a French vassal, even if... Uh, okay, I get, I understand. There is still France in Egypt, though the Egyptians have taken control of their half of the country. So it's just a matter of invasion invading Egypt. I think we can take that, right? I think we can take an invasion of Egypt. Okay, never mind then. I'll just have the Ottoman Empire declare war against the French and defeat them, finally. That would be pretty easy, I believe. And there we go. The French are defeated there. And there are no other, like, French... Oh my god, there still are French holes in the fucking Mediterranean. They still own Rome. Man, okay. I think I can defeat this, right? There shouldn't be a big issue. And in that case, we can, might be able to reinstate the papacy, which is great, since, you know, absolute monarchies loves doing that. We can let them keep uh, Modena, or whatever that is, if they repel our invasion. Okay, we might even get Modena, which is good. Okay, that's great, we got the entirety of France. Let's just do this, and we peace out, and liberate both Modena with a constitutional monarchy, and the papal state with a constitutional monarchy. And there we go, we won! Of course, our role was a liminal one, we didn't have major roles in the war, but we still had to, you know, defeat the French in the south. Without us, I doubt the Austrians would have made it. Also, the Austrians got Bavaria as a compensation and vassalized the Munsterians. Swiss, of course, have very many territories, they will eventually release us independent states. And generally, yeah, it went very good, even the British got uh, Sardinia. And they even got the Hanoverians back in their hold. So this was the first showcase of the Napoleonic Wars mod. 
Uh, if you like this showcase, then tell me in the comments and tell me if you want me to develop more and eventually release it to the public. And yeah, this was the first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys will continue to support the uh, modding I do and the, you know, videos I make. And yeah, 